propagation is really the meat of radical chain mechanisms, where the substrate molecules are converted to products through a series of radical intermediates. There are three key things that happen in the propagation phase that you should keep in mind. The first is that the propagating radical, which I'm representing here as x dot, comes in and engages with one of the substrates. Through a series of radical intermediates, in which the total number of electrons is always odd, the substrates are converted to products. And at some point in one of the steps of this conversion, often the last step that generates the key product, the propagating radical is regenerated. This regeneration of x dot enables it to go on and carry forward the chain by colliding with a new pair of substrate molecules to continue the mechanism so that eventually all of the substrates get converted to products. The propagation stage of radical hydrobromination of an alkene begins with the propagating radical, Br dot. This radical engages with the alkene in the first step of propagation, and although I won't show it here, it makes sense that the alkene gets involved at this stage, since if Br dot engaged with HBr, a transfer, for example, of a hydrogen atom from one molecule to the other wouldn't lead to any sort of productive reactivity. A productive step here, and one that's going to get us closer to the product, involves radical addition of Br dot to the alkene. Notice that this can happen in two different ways. The bromine can form a bond to the less substituted position, leaving radical character on the more substituted position, like so. Or, bromine can form a bond to the more substituted position, leaving radical character on the less substituted position, like so. Before drawing curved arrows, let's consider these two possibilities systematically. We know what the product is, so you probably know where this is going, but it's worth convincing ourselves why one pathway is favored over the other. Here's the intermediate that follows addition of bromine to the less substituted carbon, and here's the intermediate that follows addition of bromine to the more substituted carbon. Which radical is more stable? Well, consider the difference between the two. This radical is located at a secondary carbon, and this radical is located at a primary carbon. Radical stability trends parallel those of carbocations, and in a carbocation context, we've seen that secondary cations are more stable than primary cations, and so here, analogously, the secondary radical is more stable due to inductive effects than the primary radical. This means that the mechanistic pathway proceeding through the secondary radical is lower in energy, both in an activation energy sense and in a thermodynamic sense, than the pathway involving the primary radical. And this is why anti-Markovnikov selectivity is observed in this reaction. Bromine forms a bond to the less substituted carbon of the alkene so that radical character ends up on the more substituted carbon. What happens at this point? Well, let's take stock of what we've got. We haven't yet engaged HBr, and so it's likely that HBr is going to get involved in the next stage of the mechanism. And one thing to notice about the product is that an additional hydrogen atom has been added to this more substituted carbon. We need another hydrogen atom to be added to the radical position in order to actually generate the product. These considerations of bonds made and broken make it clear that we need to abstract a hydrogen from HBr in the next step of this mechanism, and this occurs through electron flow like this. This step does a couple of things. First and foremost, it generates the desired even electron stable product, the alkyl halide. In addition, however, it generates a new bromine radical. Notice here that the bromine radical that's generated in the second step of propagation came from one of the substrates, HBr. That's key to the idea of a chain mechanism. The chain is really carried forward by a radical piece of one of the substrates, in this case HBr. To carry forward the chain, this radical, generated from the HBr substrate, collides with another alkene molecule, converting more substrate to product. Now that we've laid down both steps of the propagation phase of this reaction, let's take stock of what we've done. One thing to notice is that each set of intermediates in each step is associated with an odd total number of electrons. This is because there's always some radical intermediate involved in the propagation phase. This is how we eventually get back to the propagating radical without having to do homolytic cleavage in the course of propagation. One other interesting thing to notice here is that because the propagating radical is generated from HBr, which is present as a full equivalent, it seems like we actually only need one bromine radical generated from initiation, literally one bromine atom to cause this cycle to go to completion, right? If I generated one bromine atom from initiation, that would convert one molecule of substrate, which would generate a new bromine radical, which would convert another mo molecule of substrate, so on and so forth. That suggests that in theory anyway, we only need one molecule of initiator. Now clearly, that's not the case here. 
we have to use 5 mole percent of the initiator to get this reaction to go to completion, so something else must be going on here. In fact, the radical intermediates of propagation are susceptible to radical-radical coupling, which destroys radicals through the creation of even electron species. The problem is termination. Any step that takes one of these odd electron intermediates out of the cycle of propagation through radical-radical coupling is going to cause a need for more initiator to create more propagating radical through homolytic cleavage. This is why we need more than just a single molecule of the initiator in order to promote this reactivity. In the next video, we'll look at termination in detail.